Hello everyone, my name is Loco and welcome to another game analysis for StarCraft 2 Heart of the Swarm. Today I'm going to show you a Protoss vs Zerg game that I played a couple days ago and this time around I'm not going to be the Zerg player, I am going to be the Protoss player. For anyone wondering hey, what the hell is going on here, uh, in the recent couple of days I've been playing some more random. So instead of like focusing a lot on only Zerg, I've been actually playing some Terran and some Protoss in here as well. Um, and obviously, you know, since I spend most of my time playing StarCraft 2 purely playing Zerg, my, P my, my Protoss play and my Terran play are not nearly as good as my Zerg play. And my Zerg play, you know, it's pretty decent, but it's not nearly as good as I'd like it to be as well. So, I'm trying to improve every single race at once right now by playing random, but most importantly, I am just trying to have as much fun as I possibly can. And this is going to be a pretty good uh, Protoss vs Zerg game that I played, where I felt like I was in control for the most part. Obviously, I do make a whole lot of mistakes, especially in the end, I do actually pile up a lot of minerals and a lot of gas as well. Uh, but I feel like we're on the right track. Everything considered, uh, since I've only really been playing Protoss for, I think at this point, while I'm playing this game, I think I played like three or four evenings of random or something like that. Um, everything considered, things are going on the right track. So, spoiler alert, every single time I do play Protoss vs Zerg, so far I've been going for two basal lins. I know, I know. It's the one play that I personally struggle with the most when I am playing Zerg. And I can really easily understand how it works from the Zerg point of view, so... It's easy for me to sort of like confuse the Protoss or confuse the Zerg player when I'm playing Protoss by simply like switching up the gas geysers or making pylons in weird locations just to sort of lure them out and all these kind of weird things. Uh, since I'm so used to playing the matchup from the Zerg point of view, it's pretty easy to figure out exactly what he is gonna do and, you know, sort of to mess with his head. So, two basal lanes are the ones that I have focused on so far. Obviously, eventually, I do also want to learn how to play macro games and proper macro games. Uh, but in, in this specific one, I am opening up with a Stargate and then following it up with a bunch of gateways. Um, and that's just something I've been doing a little bit and I've been testing out. So I'm gonna do some Oracle play into a gateway all in. Now this is one of these builds that used to be very popular at the start of Heart of the Swarm, but recently you don't really see it anymore. I have personally not really seen that sort of style. What is very normal right now for Protoss players is to do some Oracle harassment and then switch into like Colossus with a quick third base. That seems to be the complete norm right now. Um, and I was losing a bunch of games with Zerg myself. Uh, first is something similar like this, someone that actually went for Stargate and then followed it up with a Gateway Olin. Uh, so obviously, you know, it is something that is very un, you know, unexpected and very, very powerful still. So I'm gonna go for some Stargate play, knowing that my opponent is gonna assume that I'm gonna go for a third base, and then actually go for a Gateway Olin, I believe with seven or eight Gateways with plus one attack, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but anyways, that is at the very least like the theory behind the build, obviously I'm not able to execute it as well as I'd like to. Actually making the mistake right here as well of sending my probe, you know, all the way back home when I really didn't mean to. Do have the double gas guys just going up right now, want to start mining 2 and 2 in gas right there. And I'm just gonna start chrono boosting out a bunch of workers. So I'm not going for like a super all in -y, all in, I am still focusing on getting some economy behind that. Still having the two bases down so eventually if it turns out to be necessary, I can go ahead and eventually also get a third base, but, you know, it's not really my plan right now. Um, now, this is going to be, my opponent in this game is going to be a diamond level Zerg, and I believe at the point of playing this one, I was like rank 12, rank 10-ish diamond league as well. Um, so everything goes in it, you know, things are going the right track. I would say the Zerg player is probably like top 5 to 10,000 in the world right now, and probably the same. Um, around the skill level right now, but there's a lot of things that I still need to figure out. Uh, especially regarding Protoss versus Protoss and Terran versus Terran. I just don't really know these matchups very well. Um, and I can't really judge exactly what is going on. The one thing I've noticed, um, TVT and PvP-wise though, they are extremely dominated by build orders. Like, if you have a superior build order, you just sort of win most of the time. At least that's what it's feeling like right now. Anyways, you can see right here that I am going to be starting up my warp gate. I am also going to be starting up by plus one melee upgrades. Now, the reason why I'm going... That way, the way we have my Stargate going up. But the reason why I'm going for plus one melee upgrades uh, is because I do plan on switching into a lot of Zealots. Now, Zealots, normally when you're fighting them against Zerglings, actually take three hits to kill a Zergling. But when you get plus one attack on the Zealots, you actually only need two hits. So, effectively speaking, that makes Zealots about 50% stronger versus Zerglings where you get plus one attack going. Um, and even though I am super early with my upgrade right now, it, in theory, it is probably the best way to go. If you're gonna go for like a Protoss all-in off of two bases, you're probably gonna be better off with getting the actual melee upgrades um, and, the, and the attack upgrades rather than the actual armor upgrades and whatnot. 
In the meantime, my opponent is playing a standard game as well. You can see that he has another base going up right now. We got the six-ish minutes um, road warrant that you really are always looking for. He's got Zergling speed just about to finish up. He started some Zerglings himself, and he's just scouting around quite efficiently so far. Uh, I am, however, already producing my very first Oracle, but I believe my opponent will scout this if I'm not mistaken. At the very least, I don't end up dealing like a significant amount of damage, but here the gateways are going down. Now, one major mistake that I'm making right now is, let me actually show you, you see this beautiful guy right here, this stalker dude? There's no reason why he's here. He should at the very least be killing this overlord, but ideally I would have had him right around here, or maybe even walk out right here and then have a look at exactly what's going on. Like, he could easily scout me out what is going on, and mistakes like that can, can very quickly push your games. Either way, my first Oracle right now is flying across the map. Um, I still do have my Zealot right there on hold position, got a cannon behind it as well. Got a lot of gateways finishing up right now, plus one attack is just about to finish up as well. Got a pylon across the map too, which is crucial by the way. I've noticed, you know, if this proxy pylon probe gets, you know, gets, gets attacked, you are gonna be in a lot of trouble, and it's one of these things that as a Zerg player you don't actually realize that. But the proxy pylon probe is like the most important probe in the game. But here we go, I'm gonna start dealing a little bit of damage to my opponent if I can manage to. Gotta just target fire down a bunch of these guys. Really not killing too much though, I could have I could have gotten so much more damage done. Yeah, I killed four workers so far, just missed microing hard. I keep attack moving with the uh, with the Oracle, thinking it would go off the probes. Uh, but it actually doesn't, it actually does not like to do that. Uh, but here we go, I'm gonna start warping in units on the other side of the map. And this is pretty early, this is nine-ish minutes. Uh, I think if I would practice this a little bit more, I can actually shave like a half minute off of it. Uh, with uh, a bit more of an aggressive build, spending my Chrono Boost elsewhere and whatnot. Uh, but for the time being, the only thing I'm worrying for is that, you know, if I if I cannot take out his army, I'm gonna be in trouble, right? Like, this is still an all-in. But the one thing I'm worrying for right now is the fact that he has a lot of Zerklings out across the map, and he can actually, you know, sort of run by into my natural if I'd really like to. So ideally, I make a wall off right now. There we go. I do need to make sure that I don't just sort of have him running inside of my main base, uh, because that would be unfortunate. And I'm gonna start chrono boosting out my gateways right now as well, my warp gates, simply because you can see my minerals and my gas starting to pile up. Um, and that's the one thing I've noticed. I should have gone up to like 8 gates, or maybe 9 gates, or maybe even 10 gates, because I believe at this point I only have 7. Now in the meantime, I am dealing a bunch of aggression, did warp in a couple of zealots on the other side of the map as well. But I know these Zerglings right now are running back home, they are running across the map, so I need to make sure that my zealots are behind my stalkers, or at the very least my stalkers are not in the front, because that would be very unfortunate. Um, gotta make sure I attack move though, but here is where that plus one attack really comes into play. You see these zealots slashing away at the Zerglings? This is because they have plus one attack. These Zerglings don't have any upgrades. Um, and, um, you know, at that point, the Zealots just easily deal with everything they have to deal with. Gonna start activating the abilities once more, just nuking down all of the workers in his mineral line, and my opponent decides to tap out of the game. So, pretty good game, all in all. Definitely still improving. There's a lot of work ahead um, to uh, feel more comfortable in these kind of matchups, but I feel like I'm definitely on the right track. I hope you guys enjoyed this game. If you did, make sure you hit that like button below, as well as hitting that subscribe button, so you'll be the very first one to get a notification when I upload another video. I want to thank you guys all for watching. Have an amazing day. Do not forget to smile. And I'll see you in the next one.